Hello everyone and welcome to our workshop on methods of information theory in computational neuroscience at CNS 2020. It's, uh, it's really great to have you here. I can see uh, down on my little tab, we've got 46 people live online at the moment, 47. Let's keep that, let's keep that going up. It's sort of trending the right way. Uh, what we'll do, as you've probably seen on SCED, is I'll give a quick five-minute overview of, uh, of what's going to happen in the workshop before we switch over to Thomas Parr, who you can see on screen with me now, who's our, our first speaker. So let me just share, uh, share my screen here. Let me see. Okay. So as I said, I'm just going to give you a quick five-minute overview of... Um, what we're planning here and, and what to expect. Uh, so the Methods of Information Theory and Computational Neuroscience Workshop is now in its 15th run at CNES. It's been going a, a long time, which is fantastic. Uh, this year wasn't looking so good, obviously. Uh, we proposed the workshop again back in January. Uh, when, uh, when the world was still the world that we, uh, that we all knew so well. And then pretty quickly in March, everything wasn't looking good. And then uh, uh, everything went on hold for a while. It wasn't until I think late May uh, that we were finally sort of confirmed and had some details on what was gonna happen with uh, CNS 2020 moving online. So we've, we've kind of um, been a bit on the back foot in organizing this year. Uh, I, I found a nice little graphic uh, of a phoenix rising from the ashes because in some ways this is this is how it feels <laughs> it felt like a bit of a burning wreck at some points but but we got there we got there in the end we made it uh and we're here um even even last night i was feeling rather unwell i missed uh, the whole day yesterday of seeing this uh so i don't know what happened in some of the related talks from uh from Daniel Polani and Pedro Mediano, who are going to speak in this workshop. I missed all of the posters. So if there are some uh, related points from those other talks and posters, please do bring them up in the Q&A because I'd certainly love to know. I haven't had a chance to watch the, the ones on stream, uh, the, the talks on stream today myself. So what, what, what should I say? Let me introduce the organising committee briefly. Uh, even in the organising committee, as I say, we've had some challenges. We started with a larger group uh, the lockdown for everyone kind of whittled that down when people uh, had other responsibilities to attend to. Even even during the workshop, not all four of us are going to be here due to other responsibilities. Uh, you've seen a lot of me, I'll be chairing all the sessions. Um, let me see, Thomas, I'm just going to mute you for a minute. Uh, there we go. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of me chairing sharing the sessions. Uh, I don't think the other organisers are, are here at the moment. If you are though, please do say hi in the comments to everybody and, and let us know that you're here. In terms of housekeeping, uh, the workshop website is listed up the top there. You can find that uh, very easily on, on SCED. I'm sure everyone's very familiar with the SCED platform by now that has uh, the links for all of our talks and the, the Crowdcast links here. If you follow through the links to the workshop website, you can see uh, this little graphic that I've got there at the moment showing the layout of all the talks and you can see the whole titles and, and, and abstracts for all the talks. Uh, the times on our website are listed in uh, Central European summertime uh, on SCED. Obviously, you've got a bit more flexibility to put it in your own time zone and, and, and see that there. We've got a great lineup of speakers uh, for you. I want to thank all the speakers in advance. Uh, as I say, we're on a, the back foot a bit trying to put this together. Uh, and we had a few no's here and there due to the, the late notice, but uh, I'm very, very happy with the, the lineup we've got. Uh, most of the, uh, the, the talks are mostly a mix of 45 uh, minutes and, uh, and 30 minutes. Uh, let's see uh, what we'll do. Uh, I've gone over a lot of the arrangements with speakers already, but just to refresh your mind, I'm going to invite you on stage before your talk before each sort of one and a half hour block, uh, we sort of have a green room running and I've asked the speakers for the next one and a half hours to be there about five to 10 minutes earlier so we can have one last one last test. And please do have your Crowdcast name as your actual name if you're a speaker so that I can find you and get you on stage nice and easily. Uh, we'll also discuss uh, with the speakers that uh, we'll aim for a minimum of five minutes question and answer. You can have longer than that if you like. 
the way to do this for the, the participants is on Crowdcast, you'll see the ask a question button down the bottom. Please do throw some questions in there uh, while the talk is going. You can also see the questions that other people have put and you can upvote them, you can comment on them. Uh, please do upvote them because that gives us a really natural way to pick the questions for the speaker to answer, uh, which is fantastic. If there's a lot of questions, it's hard to know which ones to take. So if you've upvoted them, we've got a natural order that will really help. Obviously, five minutes, even 10 minutes is not going to be enough time to get through all the questions. So uh, after uh, uh, after the, the talk, if your question hasn't been answered, please feel free to post it across on our Neurostars uh, forum. So you'll be familiar with the Neurostars platform that's been used for the other talks and the plenaries and so on at CNS. We've got our own page there set up for that, uh, which I don't think I've linked to from our workshop website yet, but I will do that so you've got the exact link there. In terms of contingencies, if something goes wrong with the technology, uh, speakers, blue, speakers, please do send me a PDF of your talk if you haven't sent that yet. Uh, all the speakers also have my WhatsApp details uh, so they can send me a message if they're online and can't get to me in any other way. And for the participants as a whole, uh, if I've got some announcements to make uh, due to the technology going down, I'll make them through my Twitter, Twitter page. So do, do watch that if the platform crashes. The last thing to say is to thank uh, the Entropy Journal for sponsoring the workshop again. This is the, I think the fourth uh, year in a row they've sponsored the workshop for us by way of sponsoring a best ECR presentation prize. So we'll give that out. Uh, we'll give that out at the end of tomorrow's workshop. I think I've marked that on the, um, on the schedule there. We'll do that at, at the end after the, the last talk. Um, but what we do is to qualify for that, we're looking for our speakers who are under under 10 years out of PhD. And I think that's about uh, half of the speakers or so. So there's a lot in, in contention for that. Uh, what can I say about the Entropy Journal? Uh, to give them a nice nice bit of advertising for uh, sponsoring uh, the prize for us. Uh, it's it's an emerging journal. I'm on the, uh, the editorial board there. Um, they're covering a lot of different areas of information theory, not just the traditional areas of, of communications, but applications to complex systems and neuroscience and so forth as well. They're quite often having special issues. I know that there is specifically one open on computational neuroscience at the moment that closes in September or so. So do check that out. That's all from me for the moment. Let me just check uh, on Crowdcast uh, if there are any questions. Uh, any questions from everybody before I throw over uh, to Thomas as our first speaker? I can see Justin's there from our uh, organising committee, which is great. Uh, any other questions? Uh, there's one question here about two workshops overlapping. Is there a way to attend them both? Uh, well, maybe not live, but Crowdcast is automatically recording everything. So you will be able to come back later to one or the other and, and watch it. Um, so hopefully that, that gets around it for you. Or you can have two devices and, and maybe listen to them in stereo. Uh, 